The life of New York City is full of transformations. Old factories become apartments, manufacturing neighborhoods give way to dot-coms, and the landscape of the city continues to change. One current debate is over the future of another leftover from the city's industrial past, the elevated freight railroad on the west side of Manhattan. I remember the first time I came up here. It was magic. It was an Alice in Wonderland experience. You go through that keyhole and suddenly you're in another world that you never imagined existed. Walking the rails is a rural experience and here you are in the middle of Manhattan having a rural experience. I've worked primarily with the American landscape. My approach has been to look at the landscape to find a, a kind of beauty as it truly exists. Looking at landscape for what it reveals about the human moment past and the present human moment. I mean, this is the surface of the earth and what we do with it tells us an awful lot about ourselves. The High Line is an out-of-use rail viaduct that was built in the early 1930s to lift freight trains off the street. It was thought that transportation forms would be layered one on top of each other. It comes up out of the ground at 34th Street and then it comes down through West Chelsea and then goes down into the meatpacking district. Very soon after it was completed, it fell into very marginal use. The High Line is a true ruin. It is what it is. It's beautiful and it's ratty and it's lovely. The High Line is untouched. Nothing's happened up here in the last 22 years. For that reason, it's such a jewel. It's absolutely pristine. It doesn't fit the public's notion of pristine, which is nature untrammeled, but, but it, in some ways it's more pristine than Yellowstone or Yosemite because every inch of it is authentic. It's currently a threatened structure. There is a group of property owners who own land underneath the High Line who want it torn down because they believe that that will increase their property values. You could never create something like the High Line again in today's market. It's irreplaceable. It's essential that we find a way to save it. You know, in the 1870s, William Henry Jackson was sent out on one of the Western exploration expeditions. For years, there'd been rumors of this fantastic region in the West with geysers and waterfalls, but nobody had seen Yellowstone till Jackson brought back the pictures. And as soon as he brought them back, Congress made Yellowstone into a national park. In a way, I feel like Jackson Nobody's ever seen the High Line. And it's been the most extraordinary experience to be in the heart of New York City and see this secret landscape that only a few people have ever seen. We want to see people up there using this amazing, unique piece of open space. A lot of New Yorkers have dreams. I, I used to have one when I lived in a lousy little apartment where you dream that you open the closet and there's a secret room on the other side and your apartment just got to be twice as big. And that was sort of what I felt the High Line was. There was this huge space that you didn't know existed just waiting for you to take advantage of it. I think there are very few experiences in this world that have exceeded my expectations, and the High Line is one of them. I never imagined all this Queen's Anne lace and purple heather and all of the wildflowers and all of the fruit trees that are up here. In the autumn, this turns the most beautiful yellow color. You feel like you're in the wheat fields of Canada, and then you look up and there's the Empire State Building. It's absolutely surreal. Sometimes people look at the pictures of the High Line and they think I've digitally altered the picture to put this beautiful pathway through New York City, but there's nothing digital about it. This is how it is up here. That's what makes it so rare and so special. I, I can't imagine that there's any other scene like this in an urban center anywhere in the world. This is just a magic landscape that exists in space and time. 
And that's it for this edition of New York Voices. I'm Rafael Piroman. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. New York Voices is made possible by the members of 13. Additional funding provided by the Horace W. Goldsmith Foundation and the Norman and Rosita Winston Foundation.